Today, we're gonna to take these two pieces of steel and make a simple mosaic knife that you can make. Let's do it. So let's take a look at what we're gonna be doing. This is gonna be a basket weave pattern. It's pretty simple to make, yet it is very beautiful. We'll be using a bar 15 and 20 and a bar of 1084 cut up in two stacks to create our initial billet. This way we'll have contrast in between the layers, the white being our 15 and 20, the darker, the 1084. We'll forge weld this into a square bar, then we'll draw it out and cut it up into four equal parts. And we're gonna position them like you see here. Then we'll reforge weld that, draw it back out into another square bar, restack it to make it into our mosaic billet. Now this pattern is gonna be on the end of the bar. So we'll have to do a tile cut to get this pattern on our side of the blade. And I'll show you how to do that when we get there. So right now we're gonna start with our two stacks of steel, get them prepped to forge weld. I'll be tack welding them together, putting a handle on the billet and doing the forge weld. So let's get to it. I'll be using my new Yes Welder CT2050 to fuse the billet and weld the handle on. I recently did a review on this machine. I'll put a link in the bio. So now what I'm gonna do is start drawing out the billet. I wanna to try to keep it as square as possible. Too much forging in certain ways will cause distortion. We wanna to try to keep these layers as straight as we can or our basket weave will look kinda of wonky. Sometimes that's hard to do, but I'm gonna attempt it anyway. So I'll be using kiss blocks on the press to try to keep it square down to the size I want. Then we'll cut it up, do a test edge, take a look at our pattern and see how we're looking. Now you can do all of this with a hammer on an anvil, but it's tough. Yeah. And one of the main reasons I like to use a disc sander instead of my belt grinder and a flat platen, because when you push the steel up against a flat platen, you're gonna have a little bit of rolling. You push it against a belt and that belt will give and come over the top. It's very small, but it can roll and slightly dome your piece. Now you can certainly do it that way, especially if you don't put so much pressure but you really need this as flat as you can get it. And I prefer the disc sander. Now I could use my surface grinder or even my mill, but the disc sander is fast and it gets it flat. Just a quick tip. All right, so I've got my four pieces square, flattened, and I'm gonna put them together. One of these is a little longer than the other. I don't know how I cut that that much longer. But anyway, it'll get cut off. There's also some weld inclusion left in here. So you can see the pattern somewhat here. I did a test etch so I could see it. I'm going to fuse weld these together, put a handle on it, and reforge weld. We'll draw it out, cut it back up into four, and do the same thing again. And these weld inclusions are just right on the end. They're going to be at the end of the billet and will get cut off anyway. But you can see where this is going.
So I got the billet drawn out, cut up, cleaned up, and test etched. It's hard to see the pattern, but you can see that my pattern's not real straight. So what I did is make sure that my lines are matching. This is more like a basket wave. What I didn't realize is when I was forging the billet out, it got kind of twisted. I didn't notice it until I cleaned up the billet. I mean, Ray Charles could have done a better job forging this billet out. No offense to the blind, I'm half blind myself. But anyway, the main thing is that we get these lines matching and that's what we have here. But this is a neat way to hold your four way together. Works very well, pipe clamps. So I'm gonna do the same thing you just saw then I'll forge out the final billet and we'll come back here and talk about the tile cuts. So we got our bar fully annealed and surface ground. I like to get it real flat because when we do the next step, I want these mating surfaces, which will be here and here to be flat. But remember our pattern is on the front side and we need it on the side now. So we're gonna have to cut it or tile it like this and then flip these to expose this pattern on this side. We will cut them, flip them, tack them all up, and then forge weld the whole bar. I have numbered these so I can locate them when we do the flip and match the pattern. But right now, I'm gonna go chug this up and cut these pieces. Okay, we got all of our pieces cut, but remember our pattern is still on the ends and we want to get our pattern on this side. I'm just going to take this, lay it down like that, and I'm going to flip this one up and to match this edge, roll that one this way. To match this edge, this way. And so on. Next thing I'm going to do is put them on this sheet metal here. I use a piece of stainless. This is 316L stainless. I'm just going to fuse weld everything to these sheets and then fuse the sides. I'm not going to be using any filler metal, just the TIG torch, just fusing. After the forge weld, then I will come in here and cut this sheet metal off and draw out the billet. So now I'm gonna go tack everything down, get it straight, get it ready to forge weld. All right, let's take a look at what we got here. I'll put a close up shot here. Now I got one of my tiles flipped the wrong way, but this billet could use some more drawing out to 
equalize this pattern a little bit, make it more symmetrical. It's got a good bit of distortion in it, but drawing it out would help some of that. It's still going to be that basket wave. We'll call it retro basket weave. A lot of that is just not good control on my part. It has nothing to do with my blindness. But if you notice, I still got a good bit of thickness here that I can draw it out some more. I want to stop, take a look at the pattern, and make adjustments from there. So I left myself plenty of room to draw it out a little more. But I hope you got something out of it. And if you'd like to see me make the knife out of this, watch for the next video, part two. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank my patrons. And we'll see you on the next one.